Uh, good afternoon then, people. How are we? Well, look at this. is a bit of a full room, isn't it? Right. My name's Keith Findlay. Just for those who are not aware of who I am, uh, I do a little bit of this. Uh, I do quite a lot. I'll talk about that in a minute. Uh, I am from Scotland, uh, perhaps you've noticed. Uh, I shall talk in a, in a dialect that everybody hopefully can understand. However, I'm one of these interactive guys. I'm not really one for um, preaching. Uh, if you wish me to do that, by all means I shall. But I like feedback. I like people to talk to me. I'll maybe ask some questions and offer people the opportunity to tell me their story. Uh, so if you don't wish to, then that's fine. If you do, by all means, uh, we'll do that. We will manage time effectively. Uh, and it is an open session, so should you wish to ask questions throughout it, by all means do so. And if we run out of time, I'm here for the rest of the afternoon, uh, up until half past four when I'll do this again next door for those who need to see it again or wish to come or invite their friends along. But well, by all means, uh, we can take it further than that. So, we're here to talk about uh, more out and less in. It's, ultimately, it's workplace organisation. Uh, and I'll be honest with you, 90% of what we're going to go through you already know. So you're asking yourself, well, why am I here? Why am I wasting the next hour? Good question. And I'll come up with an answer for that just in a minute. <clears throat> Ultimately, it's how you thread it all together. It's how you make it work for yourself. And sometimes it's just about taking what you already know and putting a bit of energy below it and going, do you know what? I'm going to go back and I'm going to make a difference because I've decided to do so. So let's see if this works. Not with that button. Not, for, not with this distance, perhaps. So who's, who am I? So just to give you a bit of pedigree, I've been doing lean manufacturing for the last 25 years or thereabouts. I sort of uh, cut my teeth with Jaguar Land Rover. I've worked for Mitsubishi and Ford and Johnson & Johnson and a few others. Uh, I'll not give you my CV, but I've done it all over the world and I've been privileged to do so. Uh, and some of the projects that I've worked on have saved these businesses and the others uh, £7 million and up. Uh, and if we could all save £7 million, that would be great. Uh, but they were big projects, so how does that fit your world? Well, it probably doesn't, but the percentage saving to these businesses may actually benefit you. If you could save an extra 1%, 2%, 10%, what would that mean to you as a business and your bottom line? So why? Well, I have to say, without a doubt, I've been very privileged. I've managed to get myself all over the place into businesses that I really ought not to have been in. Uh, however, my passion, my drive, my enthusiasm got me there and I did a good thing. I returned the favour and said, listen, you've taken me on, I'll do a little bit back for you. And I'm, I'm passionate about manufacturing of all sorts. And that's not just the bit that people stick things together and eventually put in a box and put out the door as a sales item. It's all of the functions that go along with it. Because manufacturing doesn't happen on its own, it happens with other people. There's a sales team out there doing a little bit of activity. There's some marketing, perhaps, as well, letting you know what the, that they're around. And beside that, you've got some engineering functions. You've possibly got an <coughs> HR department or some other departments that all work together. And there's an opportunity to do something with all of those within this. Uh, and we'll explore some of those opportunities and ideas today here in the room. So why am I doing it? Well, let's, let's, let's have everybody know what I know. And if everybody did, then we'd all be in a better place, I think. And I don't mean that to sound... Uh, boastful or bragging, it, it would just generally be better. People benefit from this and they don't have to wait the 25 years that I've endured my career over to get it. You can have it now. And I'm guilty of giving away stuff for free. Uh, not pens and pencils, I'll say that you know. But information, education. If you can have it, you can have it. And I'm one of these. So by all means, if you want a little bit more, tap me up later on. I shall share with you what I can. So, Quick question, and this is a little bit of feedback, your turn to talk. What's the goal of any business? Money. Oh, fantastic. Who were you talking to at lunch? <laughs> <coughs> Absolutely. We are only in it to make money, nothing else, okay? If we're not making money, and that includes charities, because that's what they're there for, they use that money to do other things, great things, and we use the money that we make to do th more of what we do what we're experienced in, what we're, what we're actually experts in, which is exactly what you do here, okay? So unless we're making money, then we're not really a business. So how do we make more of what it is? So the great thing about business is that we can manage everything from understanding what the business is all the way to how much it's going to cost us 
What we've got little control over, and this is where the markets come in, is how much we can sell it for. Because that's decided for us. Yeah, we can turn around and say it's going to cost you a thousand pounds, but they might turn around and go, well, I'm only prepared to pay 900, and you compromise. Okay, and, well, I can still make a little bit of money out of that 900 quid. So you need to then work out how you're going to make that save and be the same. Because if you've got shareholders in your business, how are they going to be happy that you've just taken a hundred pound profit out of their share of the business? So we can affect the operation cost, and how do we do that? Well, we under need to understand what our capacity is, first of all. So here in this room just now, when you think about your own business, how much business can you do with the people who you have? And, in all honesty, how much can you get from the people who you have? Are you getting exactly what you think about? And I'll ask you to think about it in a different way. If you all pay wages, or take wages yourself, you're getting 100% of that money, or you're paying 100% of what you've agreed to pay them. How much, of that how much are they giving you back? Are they giving you back 100% efficiency and effectiveness? It's just a question, and it's meant to provoke a thought. Go, oh, well, wait a minute, I do a little bit, but I'm not actually, this is not value add. It's essential because it's, it's maybe marketing or it's maybe sales, and I'm not really getting, how many times, have, who, who, who's involved in sales? Hands up in the room just now, who has to deal with that part of the business? How many phone calls do you make or emails do you send out that return nothing? So eventually, and I don't, I don't really know the statistics, but it's something like you've got to do, you've got to touch base with somebody 12 times before you get somebody to turn back and feel a little bit warm towards you. Measure that 12 times, that interaction, how long is it taking you? Might be a voicemail, might be the gatekeeper. Might be all of those things that you've, you've added effort in, and it's this, if you're to graph it out and I'll do it in your direction, that effort's there before you get that, that dollar sign coming back in, that pound sign coming back towards you, and it's all that effort. Well, how do you fine-tune that? How do you streamline that? Well, to be honest with you, I'm not entirely sure. It's different for different people. But look at how much effort you put in. But then reflect that against your staff. Well, how much effort do they put in? And what's causing them to not put the effort in or stop them giving you that there, which affects capacity? Because I've got 10 people, they can do 10 things each, which is now 100 things. But my demand on my business is 120. And I've only sold it at standard rate, and I need to put overtime on. So now I'm having to pay more to get that 20 items put out, and it's now costing me money, because I've sold it at a different price to what I'm having to make it at. Does that make sense to everybody so far, yeah? The skills part of it. So I'm guessing everybody employs people in their business that have got the skill to do the job that they're asked to do. But have they got the skill to do other things? Other things that will make the business better? Again, provocative question. Well, we could do this. Now, I'll, I'll draw a line at what they can and can't do. Let's not have people who are executives or very, very skilled at this cleaning the toilets because that's the wrong kind of use of their time and money. And if you have a business that does that, have a think about how much you pay them and how much could you pay somebody else to do that that's not that type of resource, okay? If you've got somebody that's super skilled at one aspect, but they're not doing that part of the job that you're paying them 100% to do, what is it you can make them do instead? Or who else can you get them to do that task? Okay. How do we achieve doing this? So how do we achieve getting more out? Who has an idea? Who's done stuff in their world that makes them get more out? Anybody? No one. You've all done nothing to get more out of the business. That surprises me, and I'm going to put my hand in my hip. I don't believe that no one in this room has done nothing to get more out of their business. You'll have done some. Go on in. Go on, tell me, tell me. Go on. Go on, John. Um, brought up some on a new warehouse, uh, spoke to them, found out that they were very skilled at PC stuff, moved them into the build room. They were very good at that, but also then found out that they were very good at systems, so they moved them into a different area. Oh, there we are. Excellent. So now you've changed. You just realigned the, the staff that you already had, probably replaced the somebody in the warehouse. And I'll say this without being um, rude. Probably easier to find somebody to do the warehouse job than it is to deal with the systems or even build PCs. So you've exploited the talents and desires, I'm guessing, of that person to do something that's absolutely more value. It's got a greater return for you, because that's what you do. You don't do warehousing. You do PC builds and you do that kind of thing. So absolutely, let's do that for our business. 
and let's get something out. Now, I've been fortunate. I've had a little bit of a walk about yours, and the process flow is slick. Very, very good. People know where to go and what have you. But who else has got a process flow in their own business that's a bit clunky, or it's not as slick as it could be, or, hands up, who would like to improve their process flow? Or who here has an idea of how that process flow would look like if they could design it from scratch in a brand new building with no constraints whatsoever? I'm guessing a few, yeah, absolutely. Who here's got constraints within their business? Does everybody understand the word constraint? Size. Size, so the physical dimensions of the building. Yeah. Yes, you guys have got, have it, sorry. Yeah, absolutely. Anybody else? So you were talking about recycling and things like that or working with that. What's, what's your biggest constraint? Mm. Oh, on the spot. You can have a think about that one. So ultimately what we're looking to try and do is reduce all of these little things. Now the great thing about it is it's not just one thing. It's not even two or three. It's maybe about 10. It's maybe even about 20. And it's not the same thing. It's little small things, okay? Children get up and crawl around and they eventually like get into all sorts of things and they, they progress from that small step change which is from just lying there doing nothing and dribbling everywhere to getting up and maybe padding about the place and then they eventually get onto the edge of the couch and they start to do something. It's all development and growth. We need to do that with our own businesses as well. But we need to understand what that looks like. So how do you, how do you help a child walk? Well you put things in its way that it can hold on to support itself and bolster its own ambition to do something new. The couch, the, t the coffee table, that kind of thing. And these are all done by accident. They just happen naturally. And your own business is like that as well. So how do we make it a little bit better? Well, like I said at the very beginning, there's 90% of it you'll already do. It's just tying it all together and making it coherent. So, we get everybody to think about the same thing which means that there's everybody thinking about it. It's not just one person's responsibility anymore. It's not you as a business owner or a leader of a department trying to come up with all, this, all the ideas to fix things as well as do the actual job. Because let's not forget the reason we're here is to make money. We're not charities, okay? We're not doing it for free. We have to make money. We have to do other things to make it happen as well. So there's a system called 5S and Visual Factory. Anybody ever heard of that, incidentally, before? Okay. It's quite simple. Okay. What it is, I'll tell you what it is. It's a lean manufacturing tool. That's all it is. It's just a lean manufacturing tool. Well, I'm not a process. I'm not making cars. I'm not making tablets. You're absolutely right, you're not. But you are making something. You are doing something. You're changing one thing into something else. And you can apply the technique, the methodology, behind it to make it work effectively for yourself. It does improve productivity. And the reason it improves productivity is because it, it helps your organization by being organized. It helps you identify things when you need to do it. Who here's got a sock drawer at home? Yeah? You all know where the sock drawer is. You don't go to that chest of drawers and go, nope, that's somebody else's underpants. Well, maybe I'll try this drawer here. Mm, that's not mine either. You don't do that. You just go to the drawer that your socks are always held in and you get it. And your business is similar to that. You always go to the same place because that's where you kept the spanner or that's where you kept the monitor or that's where you kept the dustbin. That's what it's all about. How do you identify that though? Well, it always sits there. But I'm new. I've never been there. And I've got it in my hand. I don't know where to put it. How does that work for me? Time and experience gets me there. But I could have a little bit of something else that would do that too. Maintenance and sustainability. So what, what things go on? How do you maintain things? Well, you keep looking after it. Who here takes a car to the garage to get it serviced every so often and what have you? Or who's got a contract plan that allows that to be the case? Or who's a bit handy with their own things and looks after it on their own account? Well, that's what you do with your business as well. You, you look after it. You, you make sure that the things that you did put in place happen. Sales process. If that didn't happen the way that it happens, what would happen to your business? You always check up on it, you just it would fall to the bits. So you always check up, are you making sure you've got enough sales? I've got a target here to measure against. And it says you should have got 10 and you've only got three, which means we're gonna have a bit of a dry month next month. What do we need to do to fill that gap? That's the maintenance part of it. Quite simply put, there are no world-class manufacturing companies in place without 5S, okay? 
without 5S, and it's as simple as that. And we'll talk through the S's just in a second, and you can relate that to your own business. We'll have a bit of fun at the same time. So 5S <coughs> is literally these words here, and we'll go through them in order without boring you too much, okay? And it is the root of continuous improvement. If I want to improve something, I need to start somewhere, okay? I'll tell you what it's not, though. It's not a gimmick. That's the best of it. So it's not one of these, oh, it's fly by night, it's a fad. It's been out for decades, absolutely decades, and it's worked for everybody that's used it, okay? It's not magical. It's not complex. It is simple. This is what makes it effective, okay? And most of all, it's common sense. Stuff that, like I say, you'll go back, well, we already do a little bit of that. You could do a little bit of that a little bit more if you wish to do so, okay? And it's no coincidence that the most effective companies in the world have put 5S in place. Effective, not efficient, all right? So what are the steps then? Let's go through them. Who's got a garage like this? This is not mine, incidentally, just in case I'm preaching about what I don't do myself. Right, if I was to ask you to get me that orange widget, where would you go? You'd have not a chance. Yeah? It's, yeah, it's actually just around the corner here. But typically, and I'm not suggesting, this is obviously exaggeration, but go to your own business and have a look at it. And I was brought up by my grandparents, um, <laughs> badly. And uh, back in the 70s, we always had this drawer that had absolutely everything in it. Who's got a drawer like that at home? Who's got a drawer like that at work? Who's got a drawer or a cupboard or an area that's just got unidentified, well, not necessarily unidentified, but that doesn't really fit anywhere. So just put it there because it's not this, it's not that, it's not something else. So you just launch it. Next thing you know, that bit of unidentified or uncategorized things grows and it grows. Next thing you know, it's overlapping the business. So I have to go through this whole process of sorting stuff out. And the good thing is you're already in a good place. You don't need to do too much sorting out, but have a look at it. Now we're talking about materialistic things here. Uh, who here has uh, a policy on how they control data? Folder recognition on their systems. So I see a hand going up there. Oh, he was a bit scared. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so, and you've got, a, you've got a rule about how folder structure is, how the name and convention is for a folder, so that you can search it. Like so, so, so an archiving mechanism. So there you are. That's a, that's a great, that's, that's an example. So take it back. So it's not just about what you've got physically in the, the here and now. What do you do? I'll say the, well, the word virtually, but what do you do on the cloud? All oh, that kind of thing. How do you label your folders to allow people to find what they're looking for effectively? How do you label your documents to say, well, I can find this because the search criteria is this? When you go into Google or any other search engine, others are available, <laughs> although you probably wouldn't notice, you type in a, a set of keywords, but they have to then take that and do something different with it. Your own folder searches aren't as clever as that, probably. And you wouldn't want anybody just labeling stuff any old which way. You'd have a rule around that. It's the same with this. Sort it out. What would you like it? What do you need? We can use this room as an example. So what did we need in this room today? We needed chairs. We needed some TV cameras, some pop-ups. We needed some, a big TV, some other stuff here as well. We then made the next decision. We understood what we needed. So we now need to understand how it looks. Okay, so we set it out the way that it is. And it's not set in stone. It's whatever it is for that day or that week or that month or that year. Because your business may change. Your demands may be different. That might be suitable for the size of business that you have today. You, you've mentioned that you would like to grow. You're looking at moving to a bigger space or two bigger spaces. So now you need a little bit more of what you've got. And now, or it needs to be distributed differently. So the look of it changes. So you've got to set it up again. Uh, incidentally, who's got something that looks like that in their own workplace? I'll be honest, I don't. I would like one. I think it would be really great. I wouldn't know how to use any of this stuff, incidentally. I'm not entirely sure what you do with a pair of scissors. <laughs> yeah? But it's one of those. You set it up and it looks great and you can go back to it. Anybody ever been to QuickFit or ATS or any of these high street type things? They know what they're looking for. They just go to the drawer and they pick out the 19mm socket. They come and take your wheels off. They know exactly where they're going. It's, it, that's all it is. It's just how quickly can I find the spanner, though? Not the scissors, I'm, I'm not that daft. Compared to try to find it in that, you would never stand a chance. So how quickly can you retrieve the things in your business? How quickly can you get to it and get it in, into a value-added position? 
So if you can allow your staff to retrieve things effectively, or even you, or go to the folder structure, or understand how the policy procedure, whatever it happens to be, is laid out, you know where you need to be. I can set it out and I can go and do that there. The next S, oh, they're a bit of a menacing bunch. I'm not entirely sure I'd have them in my workhouse. Yeah, it's shine. So what does shine mean? Does it mean clean? Yeah, it probably does, to be honest with you. Anything else? What else could it mean? Yeah, just get it finessed up. What, it, what does it need to look like? So you take in, and again, and I'm going to try and be a bit sort of kind of provocative about this. You've got documents, and they're all labelled differently. Shining could be relabeling them so that they all follow a similar pr pattern. It could be numbers first and words afterwards, or vice versa. It could have a certain code, a certain mechanism, a certain structure, alphabetical, or lots of important stuff up here, or... Anybody work with ISO standards, incidentally? Anybody? ISO all follows the same pattern. Section 1 is all about scope. Section 10 is all about continual improvement. Okay? Section 6 is always about planning. So it doesn't matter where you sit in it, you know where you are. You think about your own business. Does everybody know exactly what it should be? And if something's sitting there absent of anybody else around to ask a question, how will I know what that is? How do I identify that? And how do I make sure that, that identification is standard throughout the business. Which takes me to the next one, which actually is standard. You'll all have a method, a mechanism. You'll all work to a standard that you already agree with. You already do stuff the same way each and every time. That's a standard. That's fine. That's exactly what it is. What do you do? Well, I do this. Do you know you to, to do it that way? Yeah, that's fine. It doesn't have to be documented. Absolutely not. Nobody's to say and introduce bureaucracy to your whole industry. But if you want somebody to do something, make sure they're aware how, how to do it. Because when it doesn't look normal, it's easy to see. You now know that you've got something to manage, something to change. And you can go back and go, hold on a second, we agreed that we would do it this way. For whatever reason, and we'll talk about that, it's not that way today. Can we go back to the way that it ought to be? Or is there a reason why it can't, or it stopped being so? And it means you've got somewhere to go back. Because that's the only way that you can stabilise things. And you need to stabilise. Otherwise, we don't get what we want. The product out, that, that, that output to whatever it is that you're doing, changes. Hands up. Who's had a tin of tom Heinz tomato soup twice in their life? Yeah, a few people. There we are. If you can remember, and I'm not saying that you're taste experts, did it taste different from the first time to the second time? No. Was it pretty much the same? Why? Because it's standardised. It? it is standardised. But what would happen if it didn't? Probably wouldn't want to buy it again. Because you'd be like that. I liked it the first time, not so much the second time. Or if you didn't like it the first time, chances are you wouldn't buy it again. Okay? Like A little bit. <laughs> when they changed the chocolate. Yeah? yeah? And that's it. They had a whole heli uproar and it was in the front page of the news and everything. You think to yourself, well, okay, that's not managing the change effectively. That's something else we can talk about, but perhaps not today. The reason we have standard is so that we know what the flow is each and every single time and I can walk away with confidence knowing that everybody will do exactly what we set them out to do, whatever that task happens to be. Yeah? Which ultimately means when it's went wrong, I know where to refer back to and I can put some sort of mechanism in place to correct whatever that happened to be. And the last S is sustain. I've got an image of a clipboard here with a bit of an audit on it, purposely. Because people think to sustain something you need to measure it and audit it and make sure it's what it is and that means you've got to put on a white coat and walk around with specs on and tick boxes and stuff like that. Not at all. If you wish to do that, by all means do so. But when you look at something, you know that it's right or it's wrong, yeah? If you had a flat tire in your car, do you need to put, get a check sheet out and go, are all four tires inflated? Well, that one's flat. I don't need a check sheet to do that. I can visually see that there's something amiss. It's not where it ought to be. Instead of the dustbin being where it needs to be because it's the closest to everybody's working area, it's upside down on top of the statue at the front of the building. That, something's clearly wrong there. So you can visually see that, and you can make it as much as you need it to be. It doesn't have to be this audit. Sometimes it should be, but that's entirely your choice. 
Okay? The only way that we get things to stick is by sustaining it and keeping it there. Okay? Um, you've all managed to wake up this morning. You've all managed to get dressed, get into some mode of transport and get here. And you've all done your own thing around here and breathed effectively throughout the day. Because these things are normal. They're part of your routine. Okay? And the reason why things like this fail on occasion is because it's, asked, it's, it's deemed as an extra task. It's not part of your day-to-day -day normal routine. So make it your normal routine. Make it normal. What you have is normal, and I use this phrase all the time, is what you have. Is it what you want? Could it be different? And I'd say different, not better, just different. Would having it different be beneficial to you as a business? And if the answer is yes, what does that difference look like? And how do you start to make that difference happen? And how do you make it normal again? Because you've made a change. Okay? And then that allows you for it to be sustained. Anybody know how long it takes a habit to become a habit? 30 times. 30 times? It's a good answer. Any advance in 30? Twice. Twice? A little bit more than that. But I like your ambition. <laughs> Otherwise, I know I'm not going to go there. Yeah. It's actually about 21 times for a habit to set in. But yeah. It's a lot of times. It needs to be a lot of times. Which ultimately means, after one packet of cigarettes, you're, hab you're addicted, it's a habit to smoke. So, we're gonna do this new thing. It's called 5S, we're gonna put it in. Here's what it's all about. Day two, what happened? Ah, it'd be fine. It's never gonna happen that way. You've got to keep nurturing it. You've got to keep looking after it, at least until it's set in, embedded. And know that it won't go right. Know that it will fall over. Know that you can go back and get everybody excited again about it till it becomes normal. Because nobody tells you to tie your shoes. As a child, you run about with any footwear until you get told to put shoes on your feet. I still get told to get put my shoes on my feet now. <laughs> but I was told if you don't grow up by your 40, <laughs> you don't have to. Yeah? Not that I'm 40, of course, clearly. But let it happen, let it be. And people need reminding more than need telling. Who here has ever been told to do something and resented it the very second that those words came out of that person's mouth? Yeah, 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 I'm married too. <laughs> <laughs> and that's exactly what it is. If I'm reminded to put the bins out, chances are the bins get put out. If I'm told, chances are I'm off to work early. Yeah, and that's exactly what it is. It's natural, it's a human thing. So let's do something that promotes that normalization, getting to where it gets to, okay? Which ultimately means we are what we repeatedly do. Excellence is then not an act, but a habit. And we need to have it a habit. We can become a habit, make, make it a habit. Nobody leaves the bathroom with their trousers still at their ankles and thinking there's something quite amiss with this. Oh, yeah, yeah, I've got to do that part. I forgot that part. Yep. And we can move on and we can get something a bit, little bit better. A key thing is about anything that you try and do to make your business better, whether, it's, whether you label it lean manufacturing or not. And lean manufacturing is, is, is a century old, okay? I'll not bore you with too much of the details, but it all started off in the early 1900s and it got made better after the Second War. And it got made even better at 1973, round about then, uh, when the oil prices were up and Toyota decided that they were going to do something and push back a little bit on the industry. And if you look at any of the lean manufacturing tools, most of them relate or have a line back to the Toyota production system. But they introduced it, they invented it and created it the way that it looks today to fix their problems. Now, unless you've got their problems, it'll not work the same way for you. So don't try and implement it like that. And don't think it'll fix their, your problems the way that it fixed theirs. That's the misconception. It has to work for you. It has to work for you as a business. It isn't one size fits all. 5S for you may mean diff something completely different to you and it guaranteed to be something completely different for you guys. It'll still be called 5S, but you'll handle it differently. You'll use different mechanisms, different tools. You've got different people holding on to it. It will work differently for you, but it will work. There's, without a shadow of a doubt, it will work. And your capacity will increase because your capabilities of the staff have so much more improved 
because they can get to what they need to get to and get it out the door faster and they're empowered which means they've been given responsibility to be owners of a certain part of their process as opposed to working to something being told to they get given an opportunity to develop something that's easy to look after and manage and sustain so what's visual factory then well oh sorry why bother with 5s first of all good housekeeping everybody likes a clean and tidy place to have work to go to um, Anybody bring visitors round to their place? They have a quick, quick, get that tied up. Come on, hide that magazine. Yep, they do a little bit of that. Or when they get people coming out of their house, have a quick polish and all that. Oh, this place smells a pledge. What's going on? You don't need to do that because it's natural. It becomes normal. Health and safety. Well, that goes without saying. You're not falling over stuff. You've not got blocked walkways with piles of product and other things, and you've handled the things that you do all in the t all the time regularly. Why are you looking at him? <laughs> One of them. Luckily, we've got a first aid kit. We're okay. It's effective. So operators know what to do, where to go for it, where to find it, and they can get on with it. You don't need to take them by the hand. Here, yeah, come over here. See that brush there? Yeah. Play detective to it and follow in its footsteps. You don't have to do any of that. And it's efficient. You're not looking for anything. You're not wasting. You're not digging through that garage of everything all over the place. You can get to it immediately. And you can now get more of that 100% wage out of that person without it being slave labor. The image also is a good thing. Who buys things based on image or brand? Yeah? You wouldn't buy... You wouldn't take your brand new Mercedes to, to Jim round the corner who's got an oily four court and holes all over the place and what have you. You take it to somebody that's maybe a little bit more reputable. Image is a big thing when it comes to looking after it. And you spend time and money looking after the important things in life. Your business is also that too. But, and effectively one of your largest assets, which is your staff. Allow them to do all that and make it work for you, work on your behalf. Okay and your losses are reduced. You're not losing stuff, but also the damage that could be occurred by the, the inappropriate storage of things is no longer there. We were talking earlier on briefly about uh, Kimberly Clark, and if they damaged the box of uh, nappies because of mishandling, they were taken out the back, put into a big skip and hose down so nobody else could use them. Ultimately, a loss to everybody because there's absolutely nothing wrong with those nappies. And there's a lot of industry that does that, it stops that thing, but they don't, they don't look after the point where it occurred. They look after the the result of the occurrence. Let's, let's look after the, the cause of it. Let's not have forklift blades going through boxes of nappies or whatever it happens to be that the damage may have caused because you've effectively managed how you look after it as a business. We've all seen signs like this. We all pretty much understand this, unless you live in Bradford. They're not really familiar with how roundabouts work here, it's, or traffic lights for that matter. Traffic lights, I believe, in Bradford are an advisory service. But it's one of them, yeah? So it's simple to follow. It doesn't have to be complicated. You don't have to have it all over the show. But you know where you need to go to get it without following it. You don't have to have white lines on the floor and everybody's heads down looking where they go, but give them a chance. Have, a, have it look the way you want it to look. How do you do that? Well, you can tell people where to put things. Give them some guidance. Give them some understanding. Could be colour coding. Could be stickers on the floor. It's whatever you've chosen it to be. It isn't one size fits all. I did say that before. Okay? But you already have something in place. You'll have some sort of signage on shelves or inside a drawer it should have these things or a cupboard when you open it up it'll have the contents maybe on the inside of a door. That's, that's exactly what it, what it needs to be. Is it enough? Possibly. Could it be better? Well, it's up to you to decide that. Okay? There isn't a book that says it needs to be this, that or the next thing. And avoid measuring it. Sorry. Avoid looking at it from a measurement perspective. The best way to measure 5S or that kind of thing is what influence it's had on your organisation. Yes, you could go up and look at a score sheet and see that you've scored X number of points out of X number of points, but does that really tell me how well embedded it is, how influential it's been to the workforce? Other than, I'll ask you a question, what have you came up with to make it better? Oh, well, we've done this and we've done that. Oh, you're excited about that more than that bit of paper on the wall. Oh, what else have you done? Oh, we did this. That's a measurement. If you're going to do something, measure it that way. Still have your score if it, if it gives you a representation, but let's have a look at what you're doing to make it better. 
So what do you have just now? How far can we take it? How far should you take it? Okay? And what are the benefits? Do you, have you just done it for the sake of doing it? Or can you name the advantages of doing something different? Oh, there we go. I've rattled on. I've got to my last slide, or second last slide or thereabouts. Questions and answers section. This is your turn to talk, because I've done a little bit of it, you've perhaps noticed. So I'm going to open up the floor to anybody here to any, ask any question that I'm able to answer effectively, whether it's about this subject or anything else that you're familiar with, and I'll do my best to answer it. And where I'm not able to answer it, I shall lie effectively and you'll believe me. <laughs> Any questions? None at all. Go on. Yes, sir. Um, any advice on breaking a bad habit uh, among the workforce if you're enforcing a new policy? Well, good question. Uh, yes. So, the best way to do this, the best way to, for me to describe this is that we all know what the catwalk looks like. You've got London fashion, blah, blah, blah. You've got Pete's models in six inch heels with three foot feathers and clothes that shouldn't be worn because uh, are far too see-through and apparently lingerie was optional. By the time you get to buy that, it looks nothing like that. You go to next, top shop, whatever it is you shop, Primani for me. Um, it doesn't look anything like that. So you need to really, really exploit the change, okay? Oversell it. Make it so exaggerated that people can't escape it, okay? Advertise the positive, not the don't do this anymore, do this. Just advertise the do this, yeah? That lasts for a little bit of time. So think of the maintenance part of it. You've got 100 posters all over the place, yeah? Like, no smoking. It became illegal in the, in, in all over the UK years ago. But everywhere, no smoking, no smoking. No, it's still overkill. People know not to smoke indoors. They don't need to be told any longer. So there's now hopefully less and less of it. Apparently, murder is also illegal, but I've never seen a sign that says don't do that. So apparently, we're okay at remembering certain things. So overkill the whole advertisement of the change. Make sure everybody's aware of what that change is. Give them the opportunity to understand. When you miss it, make sure you capture those individuals because of holidays, absences, and things like that. Don't exclude the night shift if that's your situation as well. Give them exactly the same message. Consistency is your ally. Make sure it stays the same. The message that you're delivering stays the same. And when, it's, when it falls over, and it will, correct it effectively. Without discipline, unless it's required, of course. But don't make it a problem for it to be corrected. Allow it to be, yeah, yeah, well, well, we know it was a change. But we also talked about what it looked like and what we weren't going to do any longer. Let's, let's work back towards this way and give them encouragement. Obviously, if that carries on happening, that's a different conversation, different group of people, different room. But let's look at that there. And as time goes on, as it starts to embed, you don't need to have this advertisement. You can take, when it starts to get tatty, don't replace it. Like for like, just take it down. Whatever that looked like, yeah? And as time goes on, you re you, 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 you're left with just the one don't smoke indoors sticker that eventually will disappear in time. Well, it's the simplest way to do it, okay? Conversation. Biggest failing in any, com any business, any business, and I'm talking Jaguar Land Rover, Ford Motor Company, yeah? And the smallest of businesses is communication, without a doubt. People either don't get told enough, get told the wrong thing, get lied to, secrets, whatever it happens to be. Just be consistent. Make sure the, the message that you need to give them is effective and test it out. Yeah? Don't be scared to get it tested. And don't think you've got all the answers. Get somebody else to help you. Okay? When I started in this industry, I was absolutely cock on with everything. I thought I was the bee's knees. I thought I was anything, the cat kaleidoscope. And I, nobody could tell me anything. I was arrogant. And I needed a punch. Okay? because I wasn't exposed to anything else. And I thought I knew it all. I get educated myself. I did everything I needed to do. And I stepped away from that business and I went into something else. And I remember this and it sticks with me now. And I might get emotional. <laughs> I'm not. But I was told, you're very aggressive. And I'm like, fucking aggressive? How dare you say that about me? Ooh. And it was this. Because I, 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 I was. And I had this sort of a passion that could be easily mistaken. Then I took a long look at myself. I sulked for a few days as well, to be honest with you. 
And I went, do you know what? You're absolutely right. I'm going to now learn. I'm now going to develop my own personality, develop my own skill set. And instead of just being in one industry, which was the automotive at the time, which I'll be honest with you, probably the best to learn this kind of stuff in, I now then diversified into about 10 different industries. And I've been in food and drink, I've been in pharmaceutical, I've been in medical devices, I've been in FMCG, I've been in pretty much anything and everything, even software development and PLC coding, because it works. And what I've gained from that is a bit of humility for a start, got rid of the arrogance, the passion still is there, and what have you. Biggest thing though is somebody else can, el can also help you. You don't have to do it on your own. Yeah? Any other questions? I thought I've thought, thought seen somebody else's hand up. Nothing at all? Okay, cool. Always remember, doing the same thing over and over and over again and expecting different results is the true sign of insanity. If you think it needs to be different, make it different. The only people that can make it different is you, no one else. If you want it to be different, do something different about it. If you want your staff to do something different, help them understand what difference looks like and make them go that direction. Yeah? Make them believe that it's what the company wants. It's what you want. You're in charge. It's your business. It's not anybody else's. Let them understand why. Yeah? Otherwise, it's just insanity. For those who require it, and not everybody does, and it's entirely without obligation, should you wish my assistance, and I've got lots of uh, experience and knowledge and what have you, might just be a chat, might be something a bit more, you can have a little bit of that free of charge. I don't even, I don't bother with that. No expenses, nothing, I'll just come to you, okay? Keeps it risk free, all right? Because I'm not one of these salesmen. I'm rubbish at it, to be honest with you. I'm surprised the business has lasted. <laughs> but it's one of these. If you want some assistance, some guidance, a bit more information on something, I'll come and help you, okay? Could be a deep dive or a light touch. Some just guidance on change management, anything at all. Give me a call. Come and see me afterwards. See me out in the foyer. I'm here for the rest of the afternoon. I've got business cards. You can have them. Somebody needs to have them. Uh, there's only so many tables you can prop up with uh, business cards that are wobbly. Um, but I will absolutely help anybody that requires it. Like I say, there is no obligation. I'm not one of these that pushes myself onto people. And if it's just a chat, that's fine. If it comes to something else, that's also fine. But there we are. It's there for the offer, and if you wish it. Not just limited to this, incidentally. There is lots more, and if you want to know what that lots more is, by all means, grab me and we can have a chat. Which actually leaves me to say thank you very much for paying attention for as long as you have done. I'm surprised um, that uh, I've managed to last as long uh, without too much of a break. And like I say, we're here for the next 15 minutes before the room needs to be vacated, or the next 10 minutes before the room needs to be vacated. I'm watching you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, so if you want to come and have a chat, by all means do so. Uh, otherwise, thank you very much for your time, and uh, we'll see you later on this afternoon and possibly tonight if you're about. Thank you very much. <laughs>